Jerron Boots Ennis breaks silence on IBF title and his next fight. Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence, or Keith Thurman. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Cardinal Red, Cardinal Red's Butts. Let's talk about it. All right, y'all. So news broke about 24, 30-something hours ago that the IBF had finally made a decision. They stripped Terrence Bud Crawford of the IBF title, and they elevated Jerron Boots Ennis to full champion. I just want to give my take on what Boots had to say recently about this situation and who he feels like will be his next opponent. And that's for anybody listening. Like I said, if I get my hands on one of these guys over, they might as well pick it up. It depends what uh, these guys going to do. You know, uh, I, think I heard something about Burials, but it's still another guy. You know, uh, but Smith's still another guy. You know, uh, even though they, I think Smith's about to win 54. I want to fight the best. I don't want to fight like no media or competition. I want to fight great guys. You know, people with names. That people that names that people know. All right, y'all. So, Jerron Boots Ennis, man, he recently gave an interview and he spoke about the situation with the IBF title. And it was very interesting what he had to say. He said that he feels like the IBF did what was correct when it comes to the rules of the IBF. He said he feels like they did what they were supposed to do. He said he feels like that he wishes he could have actually taken the belt from an opponent, but the IBF did what was necessary according to the rules. This makes me want to burn this motherfucker down. Come on, Boogie, let's burn this motherfucker down! Now, he also spoke about who he feels like his next opponent would be and who he feels like he wants to actually fight as his next opponent. Now, he called out pretty much everybody because I've been having a little back and forth with some guys in the comment section. And they said that, you know, Jerron Ennis ducked Terrence Crawford when he had an opportunity to fight Terrence Crawford. Your mother and I had known we were going to have a son. Didn't know the difference between careful and foolish. We'd have been a little bit more careful that foolish night 35 years ago. Now, in this interview, Jerron and Boots Ennis called out Terrence Crawford called out Stanley Onis, he called out Keith Thurman, he called out Earl Spence Jr., and there might have been one or two other names. But we all know that that was a situation that was attempted to be put together uh, when it comes to Boots and Terrence Crawford. And everybody says that Boots walked away from this situation. I don't think Boots actually walked away from the situation. I think it was a situation to where... Boots had a mandatory fight, basically, that was supposed to be lined up with Earl Spence Jr., but unfortunately, Earl kept having uh, situations of his own. He had the car accident, which got into the way of everything uh, that could have been made with Boots. Then he had the eye accident, or the eye situation, that happened right before the Manny Pacquiao fight, which impacted anything that could have been put together when it comes to Boots. Now, if Earl Spence would have lost to Manny Pacquiao in that fight, that would have derailed everything. But if he would have actually beaten Manny Pacquiao in that fight, there would have either been a Jerron Boots in this fight that got made, or we would have had another situation with Terrence Crawford and the long negotiations, which ended up happening. It's time for plan B. You might want to watch out that front window, son. This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass! Little prick stonewalling me. So, I think Boots could have been thrown into the fold with Earl Spence if it wasn't for all this other stuff going on, you know, as far as the car accidents, the eye in injury with Manny Pacquiao, and then, you know, the whole long negotiation process when it came to Terrence Crawford. So, for anybody saying that Boots walked away from that situation, it's not necessarily that Boots walked away from it. It's that Terrence Crawford was not fully away from Bob Earl when I think this was presented. I think he was still on the other side of the track. And we all know that Bob Earl doesn't really work with fighters from PBC 
or fighters that were dealing with Showtime because Bob Arum already has a contract with ESPN. So anything that gets made is going to get made under Bob Arum's rules and it's going to be featured through ESPN. So there was no way that a Terrence Crawford, Jerron Boots in his fight was going to get made while he was still dealing with Bob Arum. Now, when he finally left Bob Arum, I don't know if a Boots in his fight was actually being put together for Terrence Crawford. That, no, there's no real mention of that. So, I don't know why people try to say that Boots ducked anybody. He didn't duck anybody. We all know that a Earl Spence Jr. fight is much easier to be made because both of those guys were represented under Showtime. Just who the hell is this nigga you feel the need to entertain? So, it would have been easier to make an Earl Spence Boots fight than it would have been a Terrence Crawford Boots fight. Not to mention the fact that Boots doesn't come along with a lot of money. So you see how difficult it was to get Terrence Crawford in the ring for Earl Spence when there's all this money being talked about. Imagine how difficult it would have been and how much Boots would have had to give up when it comes to trying to make a fight with Terrence Crawford. My paycheck came in, $2,500 paycheck. By the time I cashed that motherfucker was left in with 650 motherfuckers left. So, you know, people need to stop with the BS, man, and just keep it 100 with, you know, what's really going on. I slapped the shit out of him, man. That's it! That is absurd. And he stepped back and his eyes welled up with water. Like he was getting ready to cry. He said, Why are you hitting me like that? Ah! Now, when it comes to today, Boots is the full champion. Boots is now recognized as a full IBF champion. So now he has a lot of negotiating power. His stock might not have risen when it comes to making money, but when it comes to negotiating, he is the top of the mountain if you want the IBF title. So there's a lot of fights that could be mentioned when it comes to Boots. Perhaps Keith Thurman. I think that would be the first fight that everybody will probably look for because there's a situation with Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford going on in the rematch. So an easy fight that could be made for Boots, and he'll get a nice little amount of money off of Keith Thurman fight. It might not be what it, it, it once could have been, but Thurman's name still holds a little bit of weight. So if he wanted to put together a Keith Thurman title fight that's out there, even though I know he's having a lot of trouble trying to get Thurman into the ring, but I think now that he's recognized as the full champion, Thurman would try to jump on that because we all know he's hungry for a title shot. Uh, there's also guys like Stanny Onis out there, even though Stanny Onis doesn't come with a lot of money. Uh, I'm, I'm think Stanny Onis is the interim WBA champion. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe he is the interim WBA champion. Uh, there, there wouldn't be a lot of hype around that fight. wouldn't sell very well, but that's out there to be made. He also mentioned Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence. Unfortunately, they have their own situation going on. So in the near future, those fights couldn't be made, you know, like immediately within the next three to four months. But over the next year, there's a possibility he could get either one of those guys in the ring. Now, we all know that Spence has officially moved to 154, but there's still the possibility he might come back down for a title shot. Are there other names that could be thrown out there? I think there's some younger, up-and-coming guys that could be thrown out there. He also mentioned Mario Barrios, who just came off a, uh, a nice win. I forgot the name of his opponent. But he just came off a nice win, and... and that could be something that could be uh, put together in the meantime. I don't think Mario Barrios has an opponent uh, that he's looking at at the moment. So Boots just wanted a quick, you know, payday, a quick title defense to say, hey, I got the title. I defended it already. Mario Barrios is there. Keith Thurman is there. There might be a few other names moving up from 140 uh, that he could possibly take on. You know, maybe even a guy like Javante Davis might try to throw his name in the hat, uh, being that he's looking at a Manny Pacquiao possible fight at 147. Maybe he says, you know what, I'll jump up to 147 and take on Boots at, as, as a potential opponent uh, just because it's there to be made, you know, and there'll be a lot of money 
to be made in a, in a Boots Ennis, Javante Davis fight. So, y'all let me know what y'all think about all that. Do y'all feel like Jerron Boots Ennis is headed in the right direction? Does he deserve to be the full-time IBF champion after waiting all that time and being the champion, uh, the interim champion, and, and, and being the mandatory for so many years? Or is he headed into a situation to where he's biting off more than he can chew because he doesn't have the resume according to a lot of people to back up him being the champion things i've been through in my life i'm at a point where i just want to be happy i just want peace i want to be do what i love to do and it's crazy what you got to go through to appreciate life yeah definitely and men are allowed to want to do something different you know what I mean? It's like, it's like everybody's like wants to like be mad because I left the block. It's just it wasn't the, it wasn't the work I wanted to pump no more. Yeah, hit that like button for me. A share, share, share. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Holler me on all social media platforms: Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. But you're more than likely to get a response on the tube. So holler at me over there if you want to collab. -o. Feature a product or your channel on my channel, feel free to hit my Gmail because it is a flock of cards at gmail .com. And we are at I drop CDs on the yearly. The chicks get live whenever they hear me. Some niggas I hate, some niggas are cheer me. I just wanna make sure you hear me clearly. That way I know you consider me one of the best rappers sincerely. Niggas wanna stunt like they don't fear me. On the microphone, wishing that they could serve me. Trying to get in the way of my journey. That's how you end up on the gurney. It ain't about the money, then it don't concern me. I stay on the grind, nigga. I stay early. I got a bottle full of Remy, plus I got a 50 Henny. The vodka got me in it, but tonight I got a limit. Right now we do some ginning, ain't no spending on no women. But I pass you a bottle, would you tell me I can hit it? Pass the bottle, pass the bottle, pass the bottle, pass the bottle. Death it seems you want a ball, but you're more like referees. Both niggas and your jerks, especially. Think twice before you step to me. Yes, it's me, Professor Key. School niggas on how to get the cheese. Better yet, it's me. Call him Chef the Key. If you're trying to eat, get the recipe. Uh, I keep it real till I'm buried. Yeah, on that fake shit, nigga, don't come near me. I got the monster squad, so I ain't worried. Yeah, on that bullshit, get took out early. I What's got up? a bottle full of Remy, plus I got a fifth in it. The vodka got me in it, but tonight I got a limit. Right now we just some gin and ain't no spending on no women. But I pass you a bottle, would you tell me I can hit it? So, pass the bottle, pass the bottle, pass the bottle, pass the bottle. Put girls on they ACL. Run game the dames with great detail. That's why it's for one bus and it's eight females. You know I stay stuck like fake spree wells. And the KY is the state he hails. From love, mama, move your tail. Some know you smell and you wanna inhale. Some nah. Uh, I'm finna drop on Saturday. I swear to God, I'm on the hundred stacks by Thursday. I'm off of that fifth, and it got me swerving. The ten men who get no disturbing. I got a bottle full of Remy, plus I got a fifth in it. The vodka got me in it, but tonight I got a limit. Right now we just in gin and ain't no spending on no women. But I pass you a bottle if you tell me I can hit it. Pass the bottle.